Hey, Danny, how are you doing, mate? Good, yeah, you? All good, you? Yeah, good, man. Thank you so much for the beef. It smells yeah, so good. good. <laughs> beautiful, yeah, beautiful beef. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, I had a little sneak preview yesterday and um, tried some of it. And yeah. uh, it's different to what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be... It was quite a subtle strength. It was nice. It wasn't... Uh, it was quite sort of nutty as I thought it might be. But it was sweet as well. I put quite a bit of salt on the fat. And I noticed right. the most difference in the fat. Um, and also the outside of the beef had more kind of flavour than, you know, as you go into the rib a little bit more. But okay. it's definitely, definitely a strong beef flavour, um, which a mature, almost sort of cheddar, parmesan-y sort of flavour as well, which was nice, but very pleasant. Yeah, good. That's what I noticed when I first opened it. It smelled very like, almost like blue cheesy. So, yeah, the, the ageing process obviously has made the, that sort of smell, which is amazing. Yeah. And Hillary just actually sliced his and tried a bit, and he said same, exactly what you just said. Like, yeah. you know, taste the bourbon, um, you know, the, the cheesiness of it, the, the, the fat was like melt away. So, yeah. Yeah, the, difference is, the funny thing was, so I've, I've got one here, which was uh, a sort of show where it's like when it was when it was aged and it was kind of like, you know, it, it, it took a kind of, it dried out a lot. Uh, it got a nice crust on it, but it, and it had a really different flavor, a different smell um, to to when it's um, been trimmed to normal beef that's been dry aged. And then when yeah. it's trimmed up, basically, it took all that kind of dark edge off. Uh, and, and the meat in the middle looked fantastic. Um, we were lucky as well because it was good beef to start with. So I think that, that played a big, big part of it. If it hadn't been um, quite such good quality Scottish beef, then obviously the end product won't be as good. Yeah. Um, what, what beef was it? I, I had in my head that it's Stoddard's. Is that right? or is It It wasn't, actually. We do we do use a lot of Stoddard's beef. This beef wasn't, yeah. in, uh, wasn't Stoddard's. Uh, it was um, from another Scottish uh, farm we use. Um, it was basically mainly Angus uh, cross. We try and get as much Aberdeen Angus cross as possible, generally yep. with Hereford or um, limousines or something like that, um, Simmental occasionally. But, but generally, it's, uh, it's always an Ang- It's very difficult to get purebred Angus. It right. almost doesn't exist. So the Aberdeen Angus breed is something we like a lot because it's a, it's a short, stocky animal, which means you, you get really nice eyes. Like the eye of the meat is a nice size. So yeah. you can use it for as a steak for a ribeye, as a roll joint. It's big enough that it's, it looks presentable, but it's not huge. So, you know, if you're having a, two, a 300 gram steak or something, it's not going to be like a, a rasher of bacon. You still yeah. can always have like a good kind of inch, an inch of, um, of meat, which is good. Yeah, it's, it's a good size. I know that. And um, cause I've seen some, you know, like Coke de Boeuf or Cowboy Steaks where the, the eye is tiny and the actual like, Banalis is bigger, and yeah, by the time, yeah. you, time you cook it, you, you lose a lot through the fat. And yeah, yeah. And, and it's something you can't do much about when the animal's obviously growing, you, you can't change that very easily, especially when, yeah. once, once you actually come to age it and, and, and butcher it and slaughter it and cook it. it it's, uh, it's a shame. So, I mean, sometimes it's it, it can be too small, and uh, yeah, and sometimes customers can feel they're getting too much fat for the ratio of, of, uh, of flavors of meat, yeah. So, so how how did you have you how are you cooking yours? Are you doing it on the? It, so I know you said previously you're gonna might even to try two different grills. Yeah, you know what I was like, oh, what do I want to do? But I didn't want to overpower it. So I find sometimes if you you smoke in um, like with a pellet grill, then sometimes like the the pellet you use, so say you like cherry or like a hickory, it can really flavour the meat, and I didn't want to do that. So I've used the tomato Joe got it set up really really low and slow like it's just about 100 degrees celsius so we'll get some really nice sort of light smoke flavor into it and then when it gets to about 50 degrees celsius i'll pull it off let it rest and then get the grill nice and hot and just sear the fat on the outside yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 sounds good yeah. but i think yeah, i think we should be joining us in a minute when he's ready he's probably just tucking into his beef <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, uh, this is the one I'm actually going to be doing it's for Father's Day tomorrow. So um, okay. this this one was uh, slightly more aged. Uh, it was one of the first ones we did um, for the sort of photo shoot and stuff. So it's slightly more aged than the others. So that's that's the one I've got my um, my name on tomorrow. And I, I might I was thinking about even um, uh, doing a kind of combination of sort of start it on the barbecue, get uh, or, or vice versa, start in the oven and finish it on the barbecue. Um, to see how, how it goes, really. But, um, we'll see how that goes, really. 
Yeah, because you mentioned that you can do, like some people obviously don't have a barbecue, so they're, they're going to yeah. cook it inside. So, I mean, how would you suggest if you didn't have a barbecue to, to cook it? I, th- I think you're looking at about sort of two hours, roughly uh, 180. I think it's really it's a really good idea to use a, a meat thermometer though to try and gauge because yep. every oven's different, um, and, and everyone has certain different uh, ideas and things. I mean, I've got a friend who who, who cooks it. He rests it as long as he cooks it. So if he cooks it for two yeah. hours, he rests it for two hours. And it seems to work you know, really well in his oven and his kitchen. Um, personally, I, I rest it for sort of like half an hour, 40 minutes maybe. Um, I'm normally quite keen on getting stuck into it. I find yeah. it hard to, <laughs> to leave it yeah. too long. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, and also with the weather forecast tomorrow, it might be a little bit 50-50. Some people might be um, looking sort of use the, the inside cooking rather than the outside cooking. Yeah. That's it. I, I'm, I've got the umbrella waiting, ready to, to go up just in case today. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. I, th- I think Hillary might be waiting to join us if he, if you can um, add him in. Yeah. I know, I know he gets uh, anxious when he misses out. Yeah. He might be coming in now. There he is. Gentlemen, how are you? Hilary, how you doing? <laughs> not too bad, mate, not too bad. Look, I've got, I've got it all cooked up, Danny. Oh, wow. So, he's done an amazing job. Oh, yeah. Oh. Incredible. Beautiful. It smells beautiful. It smells absolutely yeah. insane. I'm so looking forward to tucking into that. I, 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 it, it, it cooked a little bit quicker than uh, 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 I was watching there. It cooks a little bit quicker than I thought. I was expecting about two hours, one and three quarter. And yeah. It, it, I think it was about an hour, hour, maybe hour, 15, hour and a half it, it, it wow. came up. So I what? cooked it a little bit hotter at the beginning. Yeah, okay. okay. Just, uh, uh, and then um, and then, and then uh, wow. brought it down to 180. And then it, for about 15 minutes, and from about 15 minutes onwards, it was at 180. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So use the probe, use the use the meter, you know, from the barbecue there. And um, what temperature did you go up to? Uh, what, what sort of temperature did you, did you go up to when you were cooking it, Hillary? Anyway? About in the forties or? I took it off. I took it off at uh, fifty-six degrees, oh, okay. and then it was rested, uh, and then I took it off. Yeah, I took it off. And it was about fifty-six degrees. So then it, it came off. It came off at about fifty-six degrees. So it was about fifty-six degrees. So then it came off. Just at the beginning of the show, because it cooked a little bit quicker yeah. than I thought, and then I've rested it for about twenty minutes, not the whole hour and a bit. I, I, <laughs> 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 I, I think that seems to be. We, we've had because uh, we sold obviously quite a few of these in the shop uh, this week, leading up to Father's Day, and and one of the main questions has been, what's the best way to cook it? Um, you know, and it's there's so many different ways really of, of trying things, and everyone has their own take of. Sometimes it's best to stick with what you know rather than try something different. If it's a, yeah. if it's a big investment or a big piece of meat, you know you don't really want to get it hash it up and get it wrong. So sometimes stick with what you're used to, but, but definitely um, you can't really go wrong with a thermometer. That's, that's exactly right, Danny. I would say one thing: if you're going to get into cooking outside or even cooking inside, best thing to invest in is a digital thermometer, instant read thermometer, because in that way. As you say, so many variables: you, your oven, your grill, the, the beef, you know, the fat content. So many things can affect the cook time, yeah. and as you say, like Hillary's thought it was going to take two hours, but it took you know an hour and fifteen. So yeah. if you'd cook yeah. that for two hours religiously, it'd be like an old boot, wouldn't it? So, yeah, so you've got it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 there's a few variables on the day I found as well. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you need... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's nice when the little thermometer goes beep 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 and says, "Oh, yeah. so, you know, big, big green flashing light." Green Celsius. Yeah. <laughs> That's low and slow for more of these, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it, was funny, it was funny as well that when we, um, in the beef aging fridge, which we were aging it in, once we had basically every 10 days, we um, re soaked them. So we'd kind of get, get them out and, and get a bottle. And we probably used about, on each rib over the whole 35 days, about a quarter of a bottle um, and drizzled it over. But the whole fridge absolutely smelled beautiful of this, uh, like a whiskey brewery. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. A mixture of like dry aged beef and um, um, the, the bourbon as well. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Oh, that's <laughs> So it's been a big build up to this, you know. 
What a great combination! Well, hope to, hopefully there's a few people out there with them with them uh, ready for Father's Day tomorrow, mate. Yeah, yeah, there are. They're, we've, they've been quite popular, um, and it's 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 also quite special because it's not something you can't replicate. You know, if someone says, "Hey, I had it last week," can I have another one? They're they're gone. You know, yeah, there's a 35 yeah, day yeah. sort of league time, so they are quite special as well. Limited edition. Would you um, would you say the 35 day is enough, or could you go a little bit further? Like, what's the aging process? I know it kind of goes in yeah, waves, doesn't it? Aging. It does. So this this one when, is probably about uh, five or six days older than the 35 days. So it's more like 42, 44 probably, um, and it's starting to get quite sort of um, funky. I'd say. So I, I would say 45 days max personally. Right. But it depends on on your personal taste as well. Some people um, find once the meat goes a little bit sort of blue cheese sort of style, they, they struggle. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, that, so that's a sort of little bit off the end there. Off one of the corners off the top. And you get a little bit of the smoke ring. I added some wood chips to give it a bit of a smoke ring there. So that sort of comes through in the, in, in the flavor. You've got the blue cheese. There's definitely a hint of bourbon in there and uh, as well. Yeah, because it's on the edge. I think the bourbon comes in the fat. I'm not sure, yeah. but I think that's why I found. The bourbon, yeah, and it's, and it's almost a sort of like sweet, sweet bourbon. It's kind of um, I, I put quite a bit of salt uh, on, on mine. I like salt anyway, mm. uh, sea salt, and I found that it brought it brought the bourbon flavors out in a sweet in a sweet way. It wasn't like a strong flavor that we think mm. oh, that's powerful. It was like a sweet um, sort of uh, blending with it. Yeah, so that's what um, really. It's a really complex flavor. There's a lot to it, you know. It's not just, it's not just like a steak. There's so many uh, flavors going on in there. It's, uh, it's wonderful that, you know, you got this bourbon, you got this sort of crispy edge from the barbecue. You've got a bit of the smoke. You got the fat. You got the meat. It's a really, really complex piece of flavor structure to the whole, to the whole did, meal. Flavor. Did you find it got quite smoky as well, like the the barbecue when, when the fat started sort of rendering? Did you find that? Um, that it gave a more smokier effect than normal? Mostly mostly on the edges. Uh, yeah. maybe not, not on the bone side, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It, it, it definitely picked up the smoke flavor. So, yeah, uh, more than normal, hard to say, but uh, there's definitely a nice little pink uh, 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 lipstick around the edge of it, if you like, anyway. <laughs> so, so maybe, maybe a, a, a quick sort of Intro to yourself for everybody that's watching, just in case people haven't seen you before. But yep. da da Danny, Danny Lidgate of Lidgate's in in, in uh, 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 London. There, T tell us a little bit yeah, about yeah. So, the butchery. So, so yeah, we're um, we're a fifth generation uh, family butchers, and we've been in in Holland Park in West London for 175 years. Uh, wow. So a while, and we're very lucky that we've always dealt with really fantastic farmers of all species. Uh, lots of them are family uh, businesses as well. So quite often my father would have dealt with the person's father who I, you know, I deal with now. And, and, it, and it, it's nice. It's more than just a work relationship. It's more about they breed animals. They care a lot about it. And they want to produce a great product. They also want us to do our job well, to pass it on to customers in, in, a, in a good way. And we go visit farms and, it, and it's really nice. It also means we're not constantly like looking for new suppliers or trying to bash people down on price or trying to squeeze people. It's about working in sustainable relationships that um, is good, good for the environment, good for the meat trade uh, and, and, and looking forward. They also, we try and buy as much sort of grass fed beef, which is generally in the UK, something that we're quite blessed with. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of arguments there to say that grass fed beef is, is uh, a lot more um, healthier uh, on a human level uh, to, and on a planet level than some of the sort of uh, industrial breeds. So, um, yeah, we're, we're lucky. We're very lucky. And we've got a great team here. So we've, we've, uh, we've got a very, it's quite noisy at the moment, actually. I don't know if you can hear it. We've got quite a lot of machinery going on on a Saturday afternoon. It's quite, been quite a busy day. And um, we've got a really a great team of, of, of uh, men and females from all around the world in the Dutch butchers. Mate, well, yeah, thank you. I've, I've, I've had the privilege of visiting your, uh, your, your, your butcher there a, a couple of times now, and, 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 and it's a wonderful place, mate. It's, it's amazing what you achieve out of a, yeah, effectively very much. a small site, you know, yeah. and, and, and <laughs> you can see the history and everything. It's, it's wonderful, and there's, there's so many people doing, doing so many things. There, there was 
the sausage guy in there. There's pies. Uh, yeah, yeah, you've got a wonderful operation, mate. It's re re really fascinating to see, and and re really proud to that that you've you know worked yeah. with us today. Yeah, um, good. And it's glad that uh, you're online too, and you deliver nationally to the UK as well, don't you? Yeah, so, yeah, we do. So we we, we uh, deliver ourselves nationally for our own website. We also um, we, we, we obviously have people phone up in the shop and when we deliver locally to local customers. Uh, in more recent times, we started working with uh, with Amazon. We sell to Amazon as well on a daily basis on Amazon oh. Fresh, which is a sort of a new a new way of life for many old butchers yeah. like us. You know, it's, it's something that's quite unusual. Like that. But um, yeah, but that's cool. Yeah, so so can you order certainly order something like next day delivery from your shop? Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, so yeah, we we do nice. generally it'll be like same day for Amazon. Uh, we do local same day around like West London as well. Um, and then if if uh, if it's a bit further away, it might be next day. Um, but Amazon don't do all of the same things we do in the shop. So for example, you couldn't get you know a, a big rib of beef on Amazon. It'd be more kind of barbecue products, everyday products, uh, sausages, and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting world that you know nowadays. Uh, especially through COVID, that things have changed, that people weren't going to shops, uh, and it was all about delivery and um, and getting getting the sort of chain set up to do that fastly and, and effectively. So, and, and and do you deliver out into Essex where Jack lives? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. We do. We live everywhere. It's funny. We, we, it's, it's funny because sometimes we even send Scottish beef back up to Scotland. It, you know, it's it's, it's a crazy, uh, it's a crazy world. <laughs> No, it's wonderful, mate. It's wonderful. It's, it's an absolute privilege to um, to work with you, mate, and, and know you, mate. And uh, we, we we do have a, uh, a a prize winner for one of the bits of beef as well. We didn't announce it earlier, did we, Jack? But uh, no, we didn't. No. Have you got Have you got the name? I do. I've got it on the uh, the 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 production phone. How's that? Look at this man, man with two phones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and it's Jay's underscore Kamado Barbecue. So we'll send oh, yeah. you the details over, Danny. But yeah, Jay's yeah, underscore brilliant. Barbecue came yeah. from our random selection machine. And, and, and he'll, he'll, uh, he, I'm sure he'll more than enjoy one of, one of the lovely bits yeah. of beef that you've made, mate, you know? Yeah, one of the, uh, one of the guys who got um, one of the ribs this week, actually, he phoned us up and told us that he was so impressed with it. He went around and knocked on his neighbor's doors I was showing them this piece of beef <laughs> that you've been managing in Carbon. It's made them so sort of envious and say it's the best bit of beef he's ever seen. And <laughs> I don't know if he's inviting them around on Sunday, but um, yeah, <laughs> why you it in their faces? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm sure, I'm sure, the, I'm sure the competition winner will be, be pleased with what he gets. I tell you what, let me show you before we go. Let me show you mine. Ooh. Oh wow! Yeah, it's looking good. That. So we did. We did print the bones. There's a bit on the bones there that you know. I think you did for some of the other shots. I saw some of the other shots of the other bit. They printed a little bit of the fat yeah. off the meat. Yeah. Yeah. So but we've left that. Yeah. Yeah. So more goodness. Okay. Well, well, we 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 have to head off now. We have to um get our creme brulees ready, mate, to uh, enjoy after our steak. So brilliant. Um. Thank you so much for joining us, no Danny, worries. mate. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a, been a really good project. Thank you very much. An honour and a privilege, mate. Thank you. Take care. Have a good weekend. Cheers, Danny. You Thanks, too. Mate. All the best, mate.